I'm here today with Nelson Campbell, who is the director, star of the movie Plant Pure Nation, and founder of Plant Pure Communities, Plant Pure Nation. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with me here today. Yes, it's great to be here, Jane, and it was nice to see you as well in New York at our fundraiser for our nonprofit, Plant Pure Communities. Well, we're going to talk about that coming up. So Yeah, all right. But for those people who haven't seen your incredible journey, and, and shame on them because it's on Netflix, mm -hmm. Plant Pure Nation, amazing movie. T you've been able to accomplish so much. Can you give us the Reader's Digest condensed version of everything that you've done mm -hmm. since the movie came out? Yeah, first I want to say that um, one of the nicest parts of this journey has been the team of people who have become part of the Plant Pure family to help get all this good stuff done. Um, in fact, I, you know, when you, when you do something like this, you have high points and you have low points. And what's gotten me through the tough times are the people that are now part of this journey. So I couldn't have done any of this without uh, all of them. Um, so, so the film came out in 2015 and it was released in theaters in over 100 uh, cities and it's been on Netflix uh, um, ever since. Um, and we've used the uh, platform, uh, the exposure that we created from the film to, to do what we've done since. Uh, the first thing we did is we launched uh, plant-based support groups in cities around the country. Uh, we call these Plant Pure Pods. And, <laughs> and you're in one, and, uh, and, and subsequently moved, the man moved that whole pod network over to a nonprofit that we started called Plant Pure Communities. So they are now managing the pod, and they've got their own wonderful team uh, led by Jody Cass, and so they're doing a wonderful job. Um, and, and also, by the way, our nonprofit is uh, behind a program called our Oasis program, and we're doing... Uh, in, immersion programs and in, in underserved neighborhoods, underserved communities around the country, trying to test out strategies for how to get plant-based message uh, and, and affordable food into those communities. Um, so that's one thing we did. And then on, on the, the company side, because we also have a company called Plant Pure, uh, we've developed a number of, of sort of these, these key uh, elements that are essential to supporting people in a plant-based lifestyle. One is is education. So we have various educational programming. Um, we also uh, have developed uh, an extensive line of food products, mm, and, yes. and these mm, are those are amazing. <laughs> yeah. So these are these are frozen entrees, and then we've developed uh, various applications for these two core offerings: education of food, where we can uh, deliver this uh, online direct to the consumer. We can deliver it through brick and mortar retail and we have a, a, a big customer relationship with uh, a, a, a Publix. Uh, so we're in about 800 public stores. Yay. Um, and then um, we also can uh, deliver this into work sites. So employers who want to save, you know, healthcare costs. And we also have a program for physicians. And then we have this one day seminar program that we've developed as well that we're starting to roll out that, roll out that leads people into an immersion process. Um, we, so we've done a lot and we sort of created this ecosystem around, you know, community and education and food. And, and, then, and then we have the ability to deliver it to various channels. And all of this is really building up to uh, what we're getting ready to do in 2018. So, uh, so that's what I'm, I'm most excited well, about. Haven't you been able to connect with some hospitals too and start programs there? Uh, we, we have, so we have um, a relationship developing with a, a system in Texas, and um, uh, in fact, we're getting ready to uh, finalize that relationship. And, and then we're in discussions with others, a few other systems around the country as well. That is just amazing. Like, do you ever sleep? Seriously. Uh I've had bouts of insomnia. <laughs> and you've been <laughs> putting it to on. good use. Yeah, yeah. So uh, sometimes I find myself awake at uh, 2, 2.30 in the morning or 3 o'clock in the morning and uh, laying there thinking about all of this, which isn't really a very pleasant. So I'd rather be sleeping. <laughs> well, yeah. you're putting all of your efforts to good use, I have to say. Mm -hmm. We were able to connect in New York City with uh, Party with a Purpose. 
So what was the purpose of that party? Share. Yeah, so this is the uh, the nonprofit Plant Pure Communities, and as I mentioned, uh, they the nonprofit manages the Pod Network and this Oasis program, and also will be engaged as well in, in sort of advocacy uh, initiatives uh, over time. Um, so the the party was really a, a fundraising party to raise money for uh, Plant Pure Communities, and also to mark the launch of a campaign. That, that they have called, uh, it's called the restaurant, the Plant Pure Communities Restaurant Campaign. And, um, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to engage people across the country to go to their local restaurants to advocate for plant-based options. And so if restaurants comply with certain criteria that we've established, uh, then they can put a, uh, a, an, an indication on their menu or on their storefront saying that they have um, uh, Plant Pure Communities uh, certification. So. And I'm so excited because we have one in our town that just opened up, and the chef, I know him personally, he is mm-hmm. amazing, and I'm so excited. So yay. So yeah. we can get him certified um, real soon. Great. So. Fantastic. Well, I got this amazing email last week, and on January 20th, you are launching a movement strategy called Healing America. And, and I have to tell you, I was like in awe because, wow, first of all, we're sick and mm-hmm. we need help. So this is just like, wow, a godsend. So share with us your vision for Healing America. So um, first I should say, you know, it's not, it, it's not a random uh, strategy that we just that fell out of the sky. We've been thinking about this for for a long time and, and, and even the film itself was part of the journey to get to where we are today and all of these elements that we've developed uh, have been for, for the purpose of supporting what we're getting ready to do. So um, I've you know, long been a believer in uh, grassroots change. I've, I've always believed that we're not gonna heal the, the, our world, we're not gonna fix the problems we have until we can engage people in local communities to participate in those solutions. You know, we, we need a different, a whole different approach that's based on localizing our democracy, empowering our communities, resourcing our communities, to uh, educating our communities to fix problems in, in a bottom-up way. Uh. Just about every problem we have in our world, I believe, uh, can be addressed uh, in, in, a, in a bottom-up fashion. There are sometimes when obviously uh, a top-down uh, policy is required, but much of what ails us we can address by empowering our communities. And so um, what I'd like to, to, to demonstrate is, is how communities can actually fix our healthcare crisis in a bottom-up way. Because I think if we, can, if we can demonstrate that, then that'll beg the question, well, why can't we do this for every problem that, that we have? And so uh, we are getting ready in 2018 to introduce a model that communities can use to rally around this plant-based nutrition message, to bring that message to to everyone in the community. So the way this is going to go is from January to March, uh, my father and I are going to do a tour through a number of cities across the country. And we're going to deliver a presentation that we have long imagined doing together, where we're basically going to have an interesting conversation on stage that will then lead to the presentation of what will happen after the tour. Um, so so this, uh, these events really are for the purpose of laying a foundation for what will come after. And we're going to be talking about ideas that uh, create kind of a philosophical framework for this this idea. Um, we're going to be talking about um, a more, how we can see the world in a more holistic way to discover larger truths that can unify us, not just in the world of science and nutrition, but also with respect to the environment and 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 political change and social change. So we'll be talking about these things and then presenting uh, a project that we're going to do after the tour. So what is that project? So 
So what we're going to do is we're going to we're, we're going to select a city, and and right now we we think it'll be Durham, North Carolina, but that has not been finalized yet. Um, What's so, your criteria for selecting the city? Well, you know the reason that we were thinking about Durham is because it's local, so we could we could you know give it a lot of attention. It's it's right here. Um, uh, and it's a decent sized city. Um, but if another uh, community popped up and said, hey, come do it here and, and we can provide uh, all this support, you know, including financial support, we would have to look at that. Um, you know, right now we, uh, resources matter <laughs> to us because we've been, um, you know, working on a tight budget from, from day one, I haven't taken any, any venture capital funding. I haven't done anything financially that would risk losing control of the social mission of this organization. Um, the, the price we paid for that is that it seems like we're always operating on a, on a very tight budget. So, um, so, so unfortunately money does talk, <laughs> but anyways, uh, it, it probably will be Durham. And so, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take all of the, the products and services that we've developed, including a new social networking slash project management platform that we've been programming for over a year specifically to support this project. We're going to utilize all these tools to launch a health campaign in the city, engaging you know, all of the major uh, elements of the community, including the media, uh, the local city government. Um, the faith-based community, the local nonprofits, and and engaging all of them in a series of projects that we will launch on this network and supported by uh, all the other tools that we're bringing to the table to show how it's possible to reach a large number of people in a community with this idea and then provide the support that they need to live this way. Um, it's, uh, the, the, the other thing I, I should mention that's, that's kind of exciting about this. There's one more element and, uh, we actually are going to be in, doing a bigger announcement on this at the end of the year or right after the holidays, but we have an opportunity to develop and deliver a line of food products that will be ultra inexpensive to mass produce that we can then deliver into underserved neighborhoods where the needs are highest without any profit markup. Wow. And so this is where we're going to tie in the nonprofit plant pure communities and it's Oasis program. That Oasis program will become a big part of our city campaign. Um, I really believe that if we're going to really get serious about fixing some of our problems. We have to begin. We have to focus with where the pain is greatest. You know, uh, we can't uh, just bypass those communities like we always do. And so, uh, so that will be a very important part of the city campaign. Now, then what we're going to do is we're going to film all of this, including the tour and the uh, what happens after in the city campaign. We're going to film it. And that footage will eventually become hopefully part of a sequel to, to Plant Pure Nation, but under the name Healing America. And, and then we're going to, to cut and stream out short videos along the way that we can post you know, on our social media channels and, and even send directly to people's e inboxes to people who subscribe at healingamericatogether.com um, so that they can follow the journey because what we want to do is we want to educate folks to this model and inspire them to then bring that model into their own communities. Wow. And so, uh, so, so, the, so the third phase of this then will be scaling the model to, to other communities across the country. Oh, my gosh. Amazing. I, I teach environmental science, and I, just, I know what we're doing to our environment. It, it's not sustainable. And we, I often think about the lessons that we should be learning from 
Easter Island and how the extinction of the natural resources kind of decimated, weakened the Rapa Nui civilization that lived there. And Plant Pure Nation focuses on food as a resource. I get it. It's it's central to us, to life, to with us. But share with us with this Healing America how it's going to reach beyond the food. Yeah. So this is this is uh, what we're going to articulate during the tour. Is we're going to show and and of course a, we a lot of us already know this, but but we want to. Um, talk about the larger connections of our diet to issues like the environment, uh, economics, um, and issues of social justice and, and animal welfare and so forth. Uh, I, I'm a big believer that if we're going to really make the change that we want to make as fast as I think we need to make it, because there are a lot of wonderful things happening now, interest in this is exploding. Yeah. But if you go into mainstream communities across the country and you go into any Walmart, you can see that we have a long ways to go. We have, mm -hmm. okay, so we're, it's exciting, but we have a long ways to go. Yeah. And, and, and converting society to this idea is, is not going to be easy. And so, so if we're going to really get serious about making this happen quickly, which I think we need to do first and yeah. foremost for environmental reasons. Yeah. Um, we have to build this into a bigger force, a bigger movement. We have to make the tent bigger. It can't just be people who are interested in their own health or the health of their neighbors or whatever. It's got to be also people who are passionate about the environment, who, who are really concerned about the crippling health care crisis in our underserved neighborhoods and how time and time again we keep forgetting these communities and by, bypassing these communities. Um, you know, people who are concerned about um, factory farming and what that does to animals and what that does to our soil and environment, it's you know, awful. people who would who would rather move toward a more plant-based local farming model. We have to make these uh, arguments that appeal to all these groups and join together yeah. into a into a unified force. And Oh. And and not only do we have to do that, but we ha we also all along the way we have to make arguments that transcend a lot of the arguments that are being made today. We have to, and this is what we'll be talking about in the tours. We again we have to learn to see things through a more holistic lens, so we can discover bigger truths that can that can then bring people together, you know, that can appeal to the mainstream. Mm -hmm. And so that's really what, what, what I think needs to happen is, is we need to make this a more diversified, more, a bigger, more political uh, grassroots movement. Oh, and it so needs it. Well, mm. as a country, we spend more per person on health as compared to other countries, but we're sicker. So mm -hmm. how is your healing program, Healing America, going to help impact our health crisis? Well, we've seen in our own jump starts that when people go on this diet uh, within as short a time as 10 days, I know. they have, and, and you've seen this, they've had dramatic, they get dramatic improvement in their numbers and over 80% of the people who are medicated for one reason or another have the option to, to get off those medications or substantially reduce them. So, so, you know, the Potential cost savings from this idea are enormous. Huge. Um, but but what's interesting is is I think you're kind of a news hound too. But I, I, uh, I, if if you watch the news, when have you ever heard a policymaker in Washington in any debate even utter the words plant based diet? It's never. I've never seen it. I've never heard it. It's unbelievable. But, how can you know, how can they ignore this? Yeah, I mean, it's the only way to solve our health care crisis. They, all they do is they argue about who's going to pay the bill, but they don't. Talk, and, 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 and by the way, there's not a whole lot of difference. OK, some people might get upset at me for saying this, but really not a whole lot of difference, whether it's the private sector that pays the bill or the public sector, because at the end of the day, all that is is a funnel. OK, right. at the end of the day, we're all still paying for it. Exactly. Okay, if you pay for it through through government, the taxpayers have to fund that, or future generations have to fund it because we're piling on so much debt. So at the end of the day, we still pay for it. Mm -hmm. 
we all pay for it. And the only way that we're going to reduce the bill is to reduce demand for health care. Well, I love how you talk about empowerment within the individual, because this is empowering. I mean, that you can make choices for yourself that's going to directly impact your health, but also within communities. Can you share some of this within your vision? Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it's always interesting to me to see when someone uh, discovers this health truth and how it can transform their, their it, life. It is. It's transforming, um, truly. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, you see a couple things. One is you see that empowerment. You see that light switch go on, and, and, and it affects every part of the person's life. You know, they just have this sense of, I can do it. I didn't know I could do this, and I, could, I can take care of what's most important to me. Then what's the very next thing they do? They, they want to reach out and spread this to the people they love, yeah. right? And that is the exact same dynamic that we have to tap into when we talk about community empowerment. We have to figure out how to get information, resources, and organization to local people and groups who can fix problems. And it's the same process. You know, you, 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 you have you discover how you can achieve something, how you can fix something. And it just feeds your heart and you want to go out and you want to spread that. You want to, you want to do more of it. And, you know, it's the same dynamic and, and, and that's what we have to tap into. You know, there's, uh, I'll just give you a little teaser thought, uh, something we're going to discuss on the tour Uh, for, for many, many years. Uh, We've been divided in this country politically between one side on the left and one side on the right that, and I'm making some generalizations here, okay? I, I understand that, but, but, but they're still true. <laughs> on the left, on the left, there's been this general recognition that we can't be free until we're all free. And there's a tendency on the left to want to become, you know, sort of social activists and focus on issues of social justice. How do we, and I, by the way, that's, I agree with that. You know, there's truth. There's truth to that view. Um, um, on the right, there's uh, a recognition that top-down solutions usually don't work. You know that government's a very blunt tool, and 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 quite frankly, you know the the, the bigger we make government, the less the, the the greater the inefficiency inefficiency we inefficiencies we re- introduce into our society, and also the greater uh, opportunities we create for corruption by, by the rich and powerful. So so government doesn't really work, but yet. Uh, we have a world in dire need of healing and we need social activism. Uh, And so we can bring these things together. Um, The other thing I should say is that on the right, uh, there's a focus on the individual, individualism, right? On the left, there's a focus more on community, the idea of community. Um, The reality is that those two things are the flip sides of the same coin. Communities are built from empowered individuals empowered individuals who are reaching out to connect with the people around them. All right. So, so there's lots of opportunity between these two viewpoints to discover larger truths that can unify us around the idea of let's become socially active. Let's heal our world, but let's do it in a bottom up way that empowers individuals and builds community. Wow. Wow. That's, that's a bigger truth that we can all come together around. Wow. And we can prove out that idea by showing how a city can address our healthcare crisis. That's going to be powerful. So. It is. I mean, I, I have to ask the question because like you said, you know, there's nights you don't sleep. Why, why are you doing this? What's driving Nelson? Uh, well, you know, first I do I do really love people. I know that sounds corny, but uh, I, I, <laughs> I I do I, I love people and I love the people I work with and the people that we relate with. And every time I go speak, I feel that way about the audience. I actually I grew up a painfully shy kid. Uh, I couldn't hardly open my mouth, and I had to conquer that fear as an adult. But one of the things that uh, helped me is just you know, feeling that connection with people and, and, and that affection. Um, I'm also a, uh, a spiritual person. Um, I kind of have a unique uh, perspective on that, I think. 
Um, but in the sense that uh, I think that we're, our lives are not random. Uh, I think we, we are here for a reason. Um, I think the entire universe is, has direction and purpose. There's an intelligence that uh, pervades the, the universe and it, it gives our lives meaning. And we are here to, to evolve our souls. And, and I don't know exactly why. <laughs> I think we'll all find out so, at some point. Um, but uh, but we're, our, our journeys are intended to be soulful. And that means trying to always broaden our own awareness and understanding um, un to discover who we really are, which is we're not the things that we're connected to, but we are souls on a journey. And, and always reaching out to love the people around us to the best of our ability. Um, so anyways, that's just my philosophy of life. And I've just, it's a very self-centered view. Okay. I know that sounds odd, but it's true because it's what leads to an empowered life. It's what leads to a meaningful life. It's the kind of life that you, you hopefully, uh, you know, you look back on and you say, wow, I'm glad I lived that way. Well, and also growing up in your household, I can only imagine the conversations at your dinner table growing up. I mean, with your dad and your mom and standing up for what they believe in. I think, I think that some of that has fallen off on you. Well, we did talk a lot about nutrition. I can tell you that. Um, I can only sometimes, imagine. Sometimes I get tired of the, uh, <laughs> of the conversation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, no, I, I, uh, obviously I'm a big advocate of this, uh, nutritional message, but I do want to, to address some of these other issues and oh kind, of, kind of move beyond just the plant-based message. I, I think environmentally, I think the alarm bells should be going off for everyone. Uh, the, um, yeah. yeah, I think we, we could be nearing uh, some, some key tipping points with our, our climate that um, the, the science in, uh, of climate change is reminiscent of the science that uh, we've seen in nutrition for decades where we're looking at pieces of an infinitely complex whole and we're not able to see all of the interrelationships and the feedback loops. Exactly. And uh, even over the last couple of years, uh, there have been some very concerning developments. And I know that there are still folks out there that uh, don't believe that, you know, warming is caused by, by people. Um, I think most people agree there is warming, but, uh, but there are some people who, who think it's natural. But all I would say uh, to folks is, uh, to those folks is uh, I'm not sure we should be playing Russian roulette with our planet. You know, even if, if you don't think that uh, you're not sure that warming is caused by people, uh, we, we all should be open to the possibility and working to change, to change it as if, you know, we all knew that for a fact, because we can't play Russian roulette, you know, just for those people who don't know, Russian roulette is where that, you know, you, you, two people, and I, I can't imagine anyone ever having done this, but <laughs> that must be that someone did this, but you know, you have two revolvers and you put bullets in, but, but, uh, 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 what is that? That's a thing called the chamber. I don't even know. I'm not. A, I'm not really. I don't have a handgun or anything. But, but you just partially fill it, and then you spin it, and, and and then you pull the trigger, and you know you don't know if there's a bullet in there or not. And and so uh, you know that's Russian roulette, and and I don't think we should be doing that with our planet. We so. can't roll the windows down on our environment and just hope that some of this stuff that we're putting into the environment is going to go out. No, we have one planet. Um, we need to take care of it. Well, the one thing that too that we learn is we're going to I'm giving away some of what we're going to be talking about on talking about on this tour. But but when you look at biology, you see a very complex system. But you mm -hmm. see certain key prin principles that when the system's in balance. In its natural form, okay, without human intervention, and, and and in a form it was intended to be in, there's a powerful self-corrective mechanism that's continually keeping the system in an optimal state. But as soon as you perturb that balance, as soon as you disrupt that balance, and you go in and and, and maybe 
you know, you can do that by eating an unnatural diet and loading up on animal protein. You can do that through a pharmaceutical. You can do that through radiation. As soon as you uh, disrupt the balance, there are always, 100% of the cases, always side effects. Yeah. Always side effects. Okay. So, so this is a principle of biology, but it's actually really a principle of nature. And, and, and nature doesn't end outside the body. It goes out into the broader environment. The whole ecosystem mm -hmm. behaves the same way. Right. So you can't inject massive amounts of carbon and methane and other uh, things into the atmosphere like this and, not, and, and think that there are no side effects. Right. It defies one of the fundamental principles of our natural world. Right. You can't knock a system out of balance and expect that there won't be severe side effects. Right. For every action, equal and opposite reaction. Yeah. Oh, it's like science yeah. or something. I don't know. Homeostasis yeah. is the big piece right here. Yeah. And, and moving, obviously, to a plant-based diet, as many of your viewers know, is the number one thing we can do to address this problem of climate change. It it's is the, fa the, eat the fastest, the number one biggest impacting thing we can do. Direct. to address this yeah to buy us more time right well i know we talked about you got healingamerica.com that people can go to to find out more information there's also a facebook group healing america and people should join that as well but how else can people get involved and in also to help support you in this movement well, we are going to be launching a crowdfunding campaign uh, in January that will uh, go on when the, uh, sim the sim simultaneous with the tour. So we would encourage people to check that out. But the, the number one thing people should do is go to HealingAmericaTogether.com and subscribe. Because if they do that, then we'll be able to stay in touch with people, letting people know, uh, you know, what we're doing, what we're getting ready to launch. And also as we create these videos, we can deliver those videos right to your inbox. So, so that's the first thing. And, and the second thing is, you know, supporting us through that Indiegogo campaign and just pay attention as we go along, pay attention and learn from what we're doing, because then what we want, as I said, is we want people then to bring the model that we're going to validate and demonstrate into their own communities. So that's where then people can jump into the storyline and become part of the story and become part of the movement. Excellent. So, um, and, and, and that first piece, by the way, the financial piece is actually very important to us. And it's the piece that I've struggled with the most, uh, most of all, uh, even this weekend, it was uh, getting me down a little bit again. Um, you know, I look out there and I see companies that have some silly technology raising, you know, 20, 30, 40 million dollars in, in, in an investment round. And we are struggling here uh, financially. And it's because, again, you know, we've taken a different fundraising path where, you know, we didn't go out, you know, running to institutions and, try, you know, trying to raise oodles of money because I've been through that process before and I know how quickly you can lose control of the mission. And uh, I want to be able to do things through Plant Pure, like develop an ultra inexpensive food line that we can distribute into underserved neighborhoods with no profit markup, wow. right? So, so if I were having to answer to money people, I wouldn't ever ha be able to do that, you know, the, you know, so, <laughs> so, so anyway, so, so we, the price that we paid is that we're, we're always living kind of on the edge. On the shoestring. You're, you yeah, operate and, on a shoestring budget. Yeah, and we're hoping that in 2018 we can get past that. But nice. uh, one way people can can help us is to participate in our crowdfunding campaign. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Um, and your your campaign is amazing. You are amazing. Thank you. I appreciate well, all you do. Yeah, yeah, Gene. Thank you for what you do. Um, uh, this podcast. You, you've been very successful with this. You. You've developed a wide following. You're communicating some wonderful things. And also, I like everything you're doing locally. You're part of our pod. And, <laughs> and your you wife. <laughs> exactly. So, so, we have fun uh, together. Yeah. So. so thank you for all you're doing.